Welcome to Sage Audio. Today we're covering how to mix drums. To get the most from your music, watch the entirety of each chapter for a complete understanding of the topic. Also, if you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Transient Drum Bus Compression For this video, these chapters are in no particular order but can be combined. Additionally, we'll go over some examples for both rock and hip-hop drums. If I want to simultaneously make my drums sound cohesive and thick and introduce subtle distortion to my transients, I can use a bus compressor with quick attack, quick release, and a hard knee setting. If your compressor offers a transient algorithm, that's a good setting to include as well. Let's listen to the example and notice how the compressor glues the sound, but more importantly, makes the transients stick out. Analog Drum Bus Sound To achieve a classic analog sound on the drums from the previous chapter, I'll use tape emulation on my drum bus and drive the input while reducing the output. This will cause mild harmonic distortion while introducing soft knee compression, indicative of the saturation that you'll find on classic recordings. Each tape plugin is a little different, so experiment until you find one that works. Let's listen and notice how my drums gradually become compressed and how harmonics fill out the sound. If you're enjoying the video, consider hitting the like button. It really helps us bring you more videos. Stereo spread highs. Although I want my kick and other lows to mainly be mono, I wouldn't mind some stereo expansion on my highs. I'll use a mid-side equalizer and introduce a high frequency shelf on the side image. Then I'll amplify it by about 3 dB from 5 kHz and up. Let's take a listen and notice how high frequency expansion really opens up the drum track. Increasing Kick Sustain with Gentle Saturation We've covered transients in previous chapters, but if you want to increase kick sustain, we can introduce saturation to amplify the quieter parts of the signal. I'll use a multiband saturator, isolate the lows, and then increase saturation until I find a good balance. Let's listen and notice how the saturation increases the length of the kick. Only a small percentage of people that watch our videos are subscribed, so if you're enjoying the video, consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. Very subtle, transient expansion. We've covered transients in earlier chapters, but if you want quick transient expansion, simply use a transient expander. I'd recommend Punctuate by Newfangled Audio, with which you can independently affect 26 bands of transient expansion or suppression. I'll introduce very subtle settings to my entire track. Let's take a listen to a trap beat and notice how the transients of all instruments in the signal become more apparent. In Key Kick Typically when equalizing an organic kick, we'll amplify the lows for more of the kick's thump and the high mids around 3 kHz to get the click of the kick. Let's do this, but keep these boosts in key with the song. For example, if G is the root note, I can boost 49 Hz, 98 Hz, and 3160 Hz, all of which are G notes. Let's listen and notice how the kick becomes more present as well as slightly more musical.
High Frequency Tube Distortion Tube distortion is a great way to increase transient detail while adding harmonics that'll fill out the sound, in turn making it present and aggressive. Let's use Saturn II, a frequency-specific saturator, to introduce tube distortion just to the hi-hats and other high frequencies. Let's listen and notice how the hi-hats become much more apparent. Massive 808 with reverb. If you want a massive 808, use very subtle reverb on the lowest frequencies to create a really impressive sound. I'll use a reverb time of under one second, isolate the reverb to my lows, make the reverb more centered, and use under 5% of the effect. Let's take a listen and notice how this small amount of reverb makes a huge impact on the 808. High Frequency Reverb for Hi-Hats Similar to our last chapter, we can use reverb just on the highs for an airy sound. I'll use the same reverb as before, but now isolate the reverb to my highest frequencies. Additionally, I'll increase the reverb length to 5 seconds and increase the brightness and stereo width. Again, I'll use less than 5%. Let's listen and notice how this effect has a unique quality and drastically increases the airiness of the hi-hats. Quick, lo-fi drums. In the other chapters, we were trying to make our drums sound better, but sometimes a lo-fi sound can really complement a mix. To accomplish this, let's use an EQ to isolate the drums to just the mids, then add broken analog component emulation and saturate the drums. Let's listen and notice how this could be used for a creative effect or when producing lo-fi music. If you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching.